Is that okay to you? Bearing in mind, you have stuff that you want to do in your in your future. You have dreams. You have um, things that are uneasy about about yourself. Is that actually okay? You have time. You want to spend more time with your kids. You've been moaning about you want to spend more time with your kids. You want to work out. You want. There's so many things you want to do. Is it actually okay to do 40 hours at work and then 25 hours binge watching on Netflix and then still complain to yourself that you don't have enough time? Hey everybody, I hope you are doing well. Welcome to Talking to My Thoughts, where we have open, honest, and raw conversations about, well, our thoughts. The topics will range from anxiety, life goals, relationships, kids, work, everything that runs through your head so you know the possibilities are endless. So I, you're here with Craig Riviere, aka Mr. Positive. Yep. And here with Simon, aka SJ. And here with uh, Denzel, aka Denz Creates. <laughs> so let's kick this off. Thank you for being here with us. I know time is precious, so you being here means a lot to us already. And today's topic is actually going to be about anxiety. Now, this is something that a lot of us experience. I experience it pretty much every day. I think pretty much everybody does, but it's not something that we always acknowledge. So this is something that we want to kick off and just have some real conversations about it. So let's Let's go with it. Yeah. Craig, do you want to start us off and kind of explain, obviously, as this is our first episode as well, mm. for people that haven't obviously experienced what we're, we've obviously experienced and how we're kind of going to structure this podcast is how, how the concept came about and how, what, what, how we're going to structure it. Because obviously it's, it's called talking to my thoughts. So why is it called that? What, what are we kind of aiming to do with this? We want it to be slightly different, right? So yeah, it's a good question. Talking to my thoughts, well, the podcast was first an idea between me and um, Simon, and it was just a way for us to have some really honest conversations. This is something I do quite often, quite daily with a lot of my friends. It's not just about the how, hey, how are you, what are you up to, how's work, but it's actually more like what's going on, what's really been popping in the last six months, um, has there been any kind of deep regrets you have any fears anything that's just really playing on your mind and let's let's talk about it you know um and in particular for this conversation in the podcast what makes this podcast to me to us very unique is it is literally us talking to our thoughts so you will have a section in the podcast to come where we will literally play a voice recording of us talking to ourselves I know they say that's for crazy people, <laughs> but trust me, it ain't like we do it all the time. And I think what we don't do ourselves justice with is giving ourselves and our thoughts enough time. So we are literally here to talk to our thoughts in its complete entirety. So nice. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Cool. So as you said, we're going to be talking to our thoughts. Mm. Obviously, um, myself and Craig. Um, took the time obviously the topic for today is anxiety so we took some time just to record where our thought, thought processes are in terms of anxiety and our experiences mm. so we're going to play through that because obviously it's it's quite different having a conversation about anxiety but mm. when you actually are in your own space and you really kind of deeply think about it you you tend to verbalize it in a different way mm. and it's a nice kind of angle that we want to go and approach <coughs> that we want to go with so what we're going to do is we're going to play my thoughts and Craig's thoughts, and then obviously Denzel is going to chip in, and we're going to have a little bit of a discussion around that, um, and and find out what we can kind of learn from that experience. Yeah, let's go. For those that are here that actually don't really know much about anxiety or what it really means, anxiety is a feeling of unease, such as worry or fear, that can be mild or severe. And I think when we get into the discussion, you really understand how it affects each one of us in those kind of ranges. Mm. So we are going to kick off with a first recording and this one will be by me. Diving into the x file. We, we, we going straight in, <laughs> going straight in. This is, this is like, oh, this is in my head. This is my, how I speak to myself at times and they'll be laughing or nothing. This is real out here, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. Anxiety. What could I say I've been anxious about lately? I guess quite a few things. 
ranging from future to my friends and I guess my work sometimes I don't even feel like going to work <laughs> I know it pays the bills but you know sometimes you ain't just up for it you don't believe in it anymore but this is why you're supposed to prepare yourself right for the future financial freedom all stuff like that which then leads on to your future like well what is going to happen in the future am i ever going to get married i've never really been in love am i going to have kids like i'm reaching 30 really soon and then when i do am i going to be financially free am i still going to be working there's so many questions but you know what i i know i can't always hang on to them so much and i guess the last piece of what's been more immediate is me being worried about my friends like it's been a bit life or death when i'm helping them with some of my friends and it's just things you can't control like while i'm feeling anxious about life and wondering what i'm supposed to be doing in my life then i'm also trying to convince other people why they should keep living on like why is life so great anxiety seriously just lives in the past and the future of things you think you need to change or uh, things that you're not sure how to control in the future but yeah my anxiety has been like up and down it's always there it's always up and down we always have those kind of days and i guess i just have to remind myself yo like bro just let go just chill out i guess like i'm talking to myself now and i think as with all my motivational videos and everything else i do i literally have to just remind myself bro just chill out just be really present i guess it's really nice speaking to myself funny enough even though the people say that you go crazy saying it but speaking to yourself you just remind yourself of the stuff that you know already be present don't have fear and worry leave the worries of tomorrow in tomorrow and only focus on today so i guess that's what i do for the rest of this week and onwards and then i'll probably be back here again with some more anxiety but you know what it's an ongoing process remind yourself that it's not the destination it's always the process there is no real destination i guess destination is death a bit morbid but yeah that's probably true it's always about the process so while i speak about this now i guess i felt anxious at the first i'm feeling a bit of peace now yeah anxiety always lives with us i guess we just gotta choose are we gonna let it take us over or are we just gonna let it go and do what we can do right now jeez it's I, poetic, I, I enjoyed that you know it's kind weirdly, of deep. yeah weirdly enough i enjoyed listening to that it's <clears> it, 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 like it, it I, I didn't even feel like i was in this room it removed me from the space i was just engrossed into what you're saying and i was just like bro yeah i get that as well fam <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I've been there, bro. Ah, oh, yeah. It's mad. It's mad. It's mad. That's deep. So what was your, obviously, you're, at, you're out of a different space now. You were obviously in a certain space when you was recording that. I don't know how much you've taken the time to, <clears throat> first of all, listen back to it anyway, before we obviously had a chance to listen to it. Because that's obviously the first time mm. me and Denzel's heard that. Mm. What are your, your feelings or your emotions or your thoughts around that now hearing yourself back so that particular kind of conversation would be something that is actually quite reoccurring you can wake up on a monday and i would just be on top of the world like i'm climbing the hill when i'm taking all i'm doing is walking to the bus stop like you're feeling powerful in that and then as the week goes on something is just like like it's like climbing the wall climbing the hill and then all of a sudden like i don't know rock or a piece of stone gets underneath your foot and then you slip and you're like, right, I didn't mm. see that one coming. He's like, oh, I'm cool though. Mm. You keep going and the bigger one comes in like, what? I was like, oh my God, it hurt a little bit. Mm. <laughs> but it's literally, that's how life feels at times. So with that kind of conversation, that is something that actually reoccurs quite often. And I would have a conversation either with other people or among myself and always try to ground myself and just be present because we have this thing that in, like we've been built into us to teach us to always think about the future and always kind of, 
think about your past and that. So actually, something I, I I'm very aware of is that a lot of our pain actually only lives in the past or present. Mm. If you're being very um, past or future, sorry. But if you're being very present, like in the moment, like if I just stood here, I just sit here and I just told everyone to breathe for like five seconds and just focus on your breathing. So if you do it, one, two, three, four, five. At that moment, a lot of the stuff that's going on in your head actually just starts to fade away because I told you to just focus on your breath. So you're being very present. It doesn't feel like anything is actually wrong. <clears throat> and we should be grateful that we're actually just in this moment right here. So to be honest, the conversation is very reoccurring for me. And I always try to make myself very present and just put, try to put things, cop, cop, how, do, how do they say it? Like you, cop, oh, I don't even know how to say it. It's like you're putting things in sections in your head. So you're mm -hmm. trying to things that are so fragmented you try mm. to order yeah. them and say actually this is okay this will be okay yeah. this will be okay uh, this sounds like a lot of pressure yeah for, from from my what I, what I heard on that recording <clears throat> and it's mad because i i i can <laughs> fully relate to that um most days to be fair most days um obviously you, like, as you said you have good days you have bad days but most days there's some form of pressure whether it's in the form of as you said, future thinking about, oh, am I going to be happy? Am I going to have kids? Am I going to, you know, get married? Or is it, is it about family? Is it about health? Is it about work situation? Am I going to make enough money? Is it like, there, it's, there's so much pressures that we go through day in, day out. And to be fair, when you think about it, because it's not really spoken about amongst us mm. like when we link up with our boys we don't really talk about the pressures we talk about the good times yeah. a lot of times we talk about all the fun stuff and that. that's why it kind of just when you're by yourself or like you're away from it it can get it can get too much sometimes it can get too much I, but i actually think hearing that i might you know what i might do actually start doing i might actually start just making diaries you know like, like just speaking into that mic for a minute or a minute and a half maybe before bed or something like that. yeah maybe because I don't know, <clears throat> talking about it could just relieve some of that pressure. It's a release, isn't it? Yeah, just like relieve it. And, and, exactly. and it's there. I could just leave it there. And I could just leave it there and I could just look away. But no, I get it. Do, do, you feel, do you feel, so after you said that, did you, did you feel any release or did you feel any better about anything? So yeah, as you just mentioned, you find it might be a good idea to kind of record. So I do journal entries mm. or gratitude journals, or I just actually are very honest with my friends and be like, boom. This is what's on my mind right now. And because they'll say, oh, how's your day going? I said, let me try them today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you everything. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, right, oh, okay, let's talk about it. And I'm thankful to have those kind of friends about that, that will do that for me and stuff like that. And some people won't, and some people will. Mm -hmm. But I've honestly learned to give myself more time. Now, this is something that's taken out of context because people are like, oh, just give yourself some time. What does that mean? It's like, well, have you, when is the last time you've just sat down in silence with no phone, no friends, no TV, no music, no nothing, and just spoken to yourself. Honestly, that can be some of the most scariest things for people to do mm -hmm. because we honestly bombard ourselves with so much information so we can drown our thoughts from YouTube and Netflix and um, music and other things. There's barely a time that people, people feel like, oh, like I've like, got like ants in my pants, I've got to always move around. It's actually, mm -hmm. maybe you're just not comfortable <coughs> in your skin yeah. or in your own head. And I think people need to understand that is a problem. Like, okay, let's take Netflix, for example. Netflix, I ain't gonna lie, shows are lit. Mm. I'm not up to date. Mm -mm. I'm not up to date out here. I'm honestly not up to date, but the shows are lit. Mm. But let's say in a week, you've gone 40 hours of your job and then you have, you've done binge watch 25 hours of, of TV. Is that normal? Is that okay to you? Bearing in mind, you have stuff that you want to do in your, in your future. You have dreams. You have um, things that are uneasy about, about yourself. Is that actually okay? You have time. You want to spend more time with your kids. You've been moaning about you want to spend more time with your kids. You want to work out. You want, there's so many things you want to do. Is it actually okay to do four hours at work and then 25 hours binge watching on Netflix and then still complain to yourself that you don't have enough time? It's a bit of a tricky one because I feel like people use stuff like Netflix and music and all that to kind of escape, escape from yeah, these yeah, pressures yeah. like <clears throat> instead of and i think we all kind of actually to be fair not a lot of people do always know that there's something underlying there but it becomes a habit so let's say you've gone 40 hours through the week 
and it's mad out here. Like your boss is a waste, man. Everything <laughs> like this. It's just all mad. And then you come home because during the day or when you wake up, you have all this ambition and 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 you want to do stuff. You want to do stuff. But when you get home, you're like after you've gone through that whole day, you're like, oh, today was long, bro. So you know what? Let me just watch a couple of. And it's a, it's, a, it's a comfort. It's just like a, you know, like when babies have dummies mm-hmm. and it's just, it's just a comfort. It makes them feel warm or, or better about things. So, but that part there, they, the babies that have dummies, it passes, mm-hmm. it, it's, like, pass, it's, it's, it's a, a, a pacifier. Yeah. But you will literally just sleep on that dummy. 100%. Like just. 100%. And you, keep, <laughs> and you keep doing it because to face what actually is the issue, as you said, is scary. Yeah. <clears throat> That's an interesting thing, actually. I was going to ask you because obviously one thing that you said is it's important to obviously try and take that time to be in your own space and maybe a solution is to do what Denzel said and take that time to speak to yourself and just acknowledge and take that time to think about what's actually going on because obviously things can go by quite quickly. But the thing is obviously with the time and the day and age that we're living in, everything's moving fast. Where do you find the time to even do that? Like say, for example, you just said, maybe you should just be in your own space for a while. It's not always as easy to no. do that because especially if you've got kids, mm. you're doing a long shift at work and whatever, you come home and then you're just going straight to bed, you're tired or whatever. Again, you've got other responsibilities. Mm. Where do you, it's important that you do take that time mm. and I don't disagree with that, that but how, where, how do you, where, where would you fit that in? Well, in that part, that's always interesting to me when people say that because I always <coughs> ask them, are you up to date? I, the first thing I ask them, are you up to date with power? <laughs> and and Game of Thrones. Man, don't watch. How many how many seasons? Yeah. How many seasons of Game of Thrones are there? I have no idea. Right. To be fair, eight. so eight. Yeah. Power. Then there's all these other shows. People have kept up to date. So I honestly feel that again they are comforting themselves by telling themselves they don't have enough time. Mm. They are not being honest and saying actually I do have enough time. I'm only asking. Let's say boom. Hey, I'm just going to speak to myself for 15 minutes a day is nothing you could even do that on the train but we put headphones in our ears instead so we don't have to listen to the rest of the world Mm. and listen to ourselves but actually you could just leave the headphones off which i've done a lot of recently which is i actually don't go to work with my headphones in my ears i just don't listen to music i just listen to the background and it becomes like ambience and i just speak to myself so it's it's something that's interesting i do because i kind of do that as well Mm. but i think i do it for different reasons and obviously this is is a separate topic Mm. that we could talk about another Mm. time but again just I'm very conscious of being too hooked in to like the digital age and being mm-hmm. stuck on my phone. And I, I literally did it probably two days ago when I was get on the train to work and I just had to look up. And when you look up, you just see everyone headphones in, staring at their phone, oblivious to the world. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can't be so, con- I can't be that connected like that. I have to be able to be, I have to be aware of my surroundings for one. And I feel that people are so connected to it's weird because this this is something i'm going to bring up as well because obviously we're going to listen to mine as well Mm. but it goes back to anxiety and being too connected and too dependent on something as simple as a mobile phone it's like when you lose control of that you feel anxious because it's Mm. like okay i have no connection to the world now i can't Mm. check my instagram i can't check my facebook i can't do this i can't make phone calls it's Mm. like what do i do with myself Mm. and that's another way that people can get quite anxious is that when they feel disconnected from the world like that mm. it's interesting. interesting so what we'll do we'll play my one as well yeah, we ain't got too much time let's, left let's get straight have a listen that. to that and then we'll, we'll jump into let's get some straight more into combo. that um anxiety so for me i don't consider myself to be a major sufferer from anxiety i don't really have any anxiety attacks i know some people have it a lot more severe than others um my kind of experience with anxiety is is quite mild to be fair and i think that's something that i've i've kind of grown up learning how to deal with so it's not like i don't actually experience any anxiety that's not the case but it's more so I've always kind of learnt how to deal with it. Um, It's quite a natural thing, obviously. You can get anxious in so many different scenarios, whether it's you're performing and you're getting kind of anxious about how people are going to perceive you, or maybe you've got uh, a job interview 
um, and you're just anxious to make sure that <clears throat> again it's all about perception and how people perceive you and whether you've got the job or not and that kind of waiting period so obviously I've experienced anxiety or nerves in in that instance I think it's very strange and I think in the the, the day and age that we are at now in like the digital age uh, it's a bit weird I, I've recently experienced uh, oh, I don't even know if it was an anxiety attack or it was just something that it was quite overwhelming for me and something that I, I'd never really ex experienced before <clears throat> but it was the fear of uh, it's, it's, I don't know I don't know if it's something that you could be embarrassed to talk about but it's like when you lose your phone or yeah you feel disconnected from the world and you don't know what's going on obviously you've got personal data and the anxiety in like where is it who's got it what's gonna happen if I can't get it back and that's something that I I recently experienced when I misplaced something as simple as my smartphone Luckily enough, I obviously got it back, but it was like in those those minutes that I didn't have it, the the panic that went through my system was like, oh my God, and I just could not deal with it. At that point, I think that's the only time I've really suffered from any kind of anxiety where it's like, I just don't know how to deal with this. And I think obviously some people will experience anxiety in different ways and <clears throat> suffer from it a lot more where it comes to a point of it's affecting their daily life so that's my experience with anxiety <clears throat> I think that as I said more so coming from a point of view of someone who's a man a black man at that growing up in London you have these different experiences of anxiety whether it's on the streets police gangs obviously that's going into a whole different ballpark but again those are just little things or just some for some people major things where they can't even go outside the house because of the anxiety that they suffer so I feel that I can contribute to the conversation in terms of how maybe we can or what can be done to kind of help to relieve that anxiety in a certain way just because I guess I've learned how to cope with it myself um, but at the same time I'll never I'll never know the kind of major experiences that some other people have had and it'll be interesting to know what people's experiences are on that and how they how they have dealt with it if they even have at all and if they're still suffering with it it'll be interesting to to kind of find out the scope on that so that was quite interesting i swear to you like i've had times when i've lost my phone <laughs> and i've left it at home and i swear the world is falling apart like when i was younger i used to, i swear every single thing used to go wrong train was late couldn't check when the train was going to be i had to call my friends to pick me up from the station i couldn't i messaged one of my friends who i just really need to met like it feels like it's stacking up and I'm now I'm wondering like when I used to happen when I was younger was it actually anxiety that was making me think everything was falling apart or was mm -hmm. it like that I was just getting slapped apart yeah <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying but a really interesting part that you said was I think let's go like from the beginning you said that you have ways of dealing with anxiety mm. well how how have you been taught to deal with anxiety um I don't know if it's something that I was taught or something that I just happened to learn from life experience some people as i said some people suffer from it just naturally and some people just know how to deal with it it's just like when you grow up you have a personality where you can deal with certain situations a certain way for me i'm quite i don't know maybe it's a, a confidence thing that i may have learned from young as well it's like i don't know if you're blurring the lines between looking at anxiety and then looking at like nerves and stuff like that but it's like how i dealt with it is that I've always been confident and, ass and assertive and sure in myself about how to deal with certain circumstances just because I'm someone that thinks a lot. So I'm always pre-planning something in my head before it generally happens. So then if it does happen or when it does happen, I kind of know how to deal with it. And it's not a situation of something's jumped up on, 
up on me mm. and it's like i don't know what to do so now i'm getting anxious because i don't know what, how mm. to control this situation i'm someone that's always kind of planning ahead simple thing of even just being street smart as well not going certain places at certain <coughs> times or whatever like when you're thinking about i don't know job interviews just making sure you've planned enough and prepared enough so that you're confident in the job interview any other thing some people can get anxious just thinking they're running late as you said you're running late for something there's delays i always make sure i try and leave early so that way i don't feel those kind of anxieties mm. it's just like everything's cool if something does happen i know how to deal with it mm. so that's how i feel that i've learned how to deal with those things so i don't suffer from anxiety as much and maybe that's maybe that's what it is interesting that's powerful tips though mm. like from those things already because if you stay ready you don't have to yeah, it's, it's, it's a quote. It's something like if you stay, stay ready, you don't, don't have, have to get, get ready. ready yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. I like that. But you, as you, one of the key things from that actually, because you can't always be ready, stay mm -hmm. ready. But one of the things when it does catch you off guard, you said you had a lot of self confidence mm -hmm. and like assertive of yourself, yeah. which actually I can I can imagine like so many people that are not confident sure. in themselves, mm -hmm. which then when what life is trying to hit them, they're like, "Wow, well, okay, I'm just gonna take this, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. just fall back." And that's real. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes there was weeks where you're just like. Oh, how how much more can happen? Then yeah. something happens, and you're like, you know what? I deserve it, mm. <laughs> and then that's it from there. But yeah, I'll, yeah. What about your thoughts on that? Then as well? Yeah, no, I was gonna say that. So, would you say that the only times you're not really necessarily confident it is in a situation where something might catch you off guard, aka losing your phone? Or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. That. So, so, as I said, more so, those are the only real experiences I've had where. Like I've, as I said, when I kind of spoke about it, mm. I've never really felt that way before. Mm. And it's such a weird feeling. As I said, it's, uh, sometimes it can be a bit embarrassing. It's like, why are you feeling like that? It's like, okay, your phone, you've lost yeah. your phone. It's a thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, you shouldn't yeah. really be that, you shouldn't really be feeling that over like a, mm. it's a material thing, isn't it? But, but it's just the mm. connection you have with it. Obviously you got, per as I said, oh, yeah, personal things. I've got pictures of like my kids on there exactly. and stuff. And it's just like that device and the way we are in, in society, today is that your phone is a part of it is a part of you. so you lose your phone you're almost losing a part yeah. of you and that's how i felt is like what do i do now like, how am i going to solve this problem and that's really the only time i've really felt that kind of anxiety yeah. i've never felt like that before usually as i said it's a situation where i can kind of plan in advance i know what i need to do but when you lose something like that it's like you can't plan for that bruv. <laughs> I, I know people say oh it's, you know it's just a mobile and this in this day and age and stuff like that but people are quite underestimate how 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 much we do we do rely on that because it's no longer just a form of communication from a to b as you said it has data and mm. data now is the most probably important currency in yeah, general yeah. it's got you know pictures of your kids you know your your girl like everything is is on yeah, that phone yeah. so i understand i understand the, the level of panic you would have i, I wouldn't say it's it's an overreaction or anything. I would just say that's, that's, I would be the same way. I would mm. probably be the same way. Yeah, so just, yeah, I, I can relate to that big, big part. Um, a piece that I would actually want to pick up on before we kind of like wrap up this really is the, uh, you mentioned the anxiety attack. Mm. Um, I've had those. I've never had those myself. I've had a lot of those. If he wants Why don't you of, actually speak about yeah, it quickly? Because yeah, we've uh, never heard, obviously, from our perspective, as Craig said and mm. I've said, we haven't really experienced an anxiety attack per se, but you said you experience it a lot of the times. So how does that? Yeah, um, I think only in maybe in the last in the last couple of years has anxiety even been a thing for me. I didn't really know anything about it before then. I'd heard about it. I just thought it was nerves and stuff like that. The only thing before the last couple of years, I think the most anxiety I had was before I was going on stage to perform a slam, like, <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And when we said dance, but um. In the last couple of years, I think a lot of the stuff you mentioned in your 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 voice uh, your voice note, where talking about the pressures mm -hmm. and and as you know, I, we, we're people who put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We all have always put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make whether that be make maybe successful or whatever it is. And I think for me, I only started unraveling what my actual kind of issues were, and I think I'm getting I'm getting to the roots of it. And I think it actually stems from uh, isolation. I mm. think, um, and I, I mentioned to you briefly, I think it was when I, so when I lost my dad, like all those years ago, obviously I didn't really look at it as a thing. It mm. just happened. We move wherever we can to move life. But as it's gone and I've built traits um, to sometimes isolate myself or repel myself 
from certain people, relationships and stuff like that, as I've gone on, as I've gone older. Mm. And, and then I, I found, I started to find myself in almost in fear of that being isolated because I felt like back then when that happened, as I was so young, I felt isolated because my brother was so much younger than me. Yeah. My mum, my mum had just lost her husband. Yeah. So it's not like I could talk to her. The only people I had around me were friends. And obviously you're only with them at school. Yeah. So a lot of the time I was isolated for years, like outside of school, by myself, by myself, even though I had family, mm. you get. Mm. And um, as I've grown up um, and as I've gotten older, the fears and pressures of being successful is starting to weigh and be like, raw again, am I going to, get a girlfriend because I need to work so hard. I don't have time to have a girlfriend. I need to work so hard because I need to make money and whatever. And also, it's not just that. One of my biggest things was that losing him so early taught me that life is very short. So one of the biggest things about that was I said, I want to get financial freedom as fast as possible so that if I do happen to have kids and my life is cut short, which I, I can be fine with, mm. but as long as I spend as much time as possible with them yeah. with my girl or whoever and so that's why i put so much pressure on myself to get out of the rat race mm. to make it there but that also weighs uh, heavily on me and it's not it's not something that one person can actually handle a lot of the time and even though i would always be, i'm cool like i'm helping everyone else i'm cool like it's fine it's fine it's fine yeah deep down like man's breaking up, <laughs> like man just crumbling, like all, all, over and over, and but nobody knows because when you see me out, I'll just be like, "What's going on? Are we saying like da, 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 we it's moving like, it? Boom, boom, boom." Man's legs are shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, like man, you know when you pick up a weight and you know you know it's gonna finish, but you know you're in the gym and you got ego in it, so you're just like. <laughs> you know, you do the whole shit. Sh sh if, if you ain't seen them, you're shaking yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, so and so uh, anyway, let's fast forward to the actual panic attacks and so what would happen is i've only ever had them lo and behold when i'm by myself mm. i've never had them when i was with friends i've never had them when i'm with family um i've always had them in isolated circumstances so i've had them in my car i've had them driving motorways like funny enough i've had them more so on like a stretch of motorway or long road or a roads rather than it being like city roads because i feel like city roads you need to be aware of so much stuff going on. Like mm. there's constantly people walking out. Yeah. There's constant stop and starts with the lights. So your own mind is ticking over. But when you're just on a straight road and you start thinking, the fit, the, the fear can creep in the fit and you start, and it's not even like I'm thinking about anything in particular. You just start feeling worried. Mm. You start feeling worried and then you start feeling worried about feeling worried. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it just kind of goes on and it unravels and it creates like a pressure in your head. And what I would, I would describe a panic attack feels like to me, is it's more like um, a feeling of suffocation, a feeling of like, you don't even want to look up. Like, so I, sometimes I'd be driving, man, so like suffocated by man's thoughts. I don't even want to look in my wing mirror. So I just stay in the lane. I just stay in that lane. Cause I'm like, no, if I look up, man might just, you know what I mean? Skirt off the road or something. Mm. It's mad. Um, and, uh, and, but funny enough, I've not really had too much. I've never really had panic attacks in my, like, in my house, in my space, because I feel like that's a safe haven. So when you get home, it feels like I'm, I'm comfortable again. I, I think the first time I've had panic attacks was on a train, like a really congested, busy train. And, I, and again, I think it, it's the whole feeling of suffocation. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so many people around, but I felt alone, didn't it? I felt like oh, I can't, can't mm -hmm. look at anyone. That's long. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't want to go on too much. But for mm -hmm. me, I think, yeah, so as you said, I try and um, take deep breaths and um, like, refocus my mind elsewhere when it's occurring or when i feel like it's coming on um but yeah i feel like um I, it was quite bad at the beginning of this year but as the year's gone on um i had a lot to, to kind of deal with and stuff but as the years unraveled it's gotten a bit better and i think it's just about learning about why it happens mm. um and why it's happening and trying to get to the root of that and trying to talk about it because i feel like talking about it helps a lot like it's better it's better out than in yeah. um, 100%. Like, that's not even like, it's not even questionable. So do you want to leave with that kind of advice? What would you, we, for people, I'm sure a lot of people have been able to resonate with something like that. Mm. Um, I don't know if you want to jump in on anything, but we can actually wrap up. No, nah, yeah, advice. let's wrap up as, as obviously as, as a food for thought and just thinking mm. about, because obviously we could talk about this all day, but oh, it's yeah, just yeah. from a, a learning experience and obviously just us talking about it, what's, what's kind of like your, your main takeaway, I guess you would say. I'd say, 
the fact that we're talking about it, just know that it happens to everyone mm. and know that if you, you're, you're suffering from it or, or you have been suffering from it, it's not, it's just, it's not just a you thing. It's, you'll probably be surprised how many people you would never expect are suffering from it as well. So it's okay. So like the fact that it happens, it's okay. Like you're not alone in that and you should be open about it. And I would say find someone you trust and believe in um, to talk about it. Because I feel like this year was the first time I actually spoke about it. Um, I was seeing someone at the time and, and I was speaking to her a lot about it and it helped a lot. Um, so mm-hmm. I would just say find someone you trust and believe in, whether it's your family, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and and be open with them, man. Be open and honest and, and hopefully over time, um, you know, you can, you can deconstruct it and get to the bottom of it together. Nice. All good. Um, advice from me, try to be very present. I think we lose that and we, we often fixate on the past, trying to change it and then focus on the future, trying to prepare for it. But we are never prepared for the future. In all honesty, we, we were never supposed to. We never got those powers. All we got the powers over was being very present and doing things in the present and just living in the moment. Um, and you'd be, you'd realize how pressure is, it is when you live in the moment. So be present and give yourself more time. Cool. Um, I think my main takeaway, to be fair, as, as it's a food for thought, is just accepting that, as Denzel said, it's not just you that experiences it a lot of people experience it under radar and it's about being more open i guess and understanding that people experience it differently and being able to know how to deal with it and it's important obviously just as we discussed is that it's better out than in <clears throat> talk about it and yeah just make sure that it's it's all about we're to- essentially what we're talking about here is mm. mental health in it yeah and it's about being healthy being present and and enjoying life and obviously anxiety is going to be a, something that you're always going to experience but it's a part of life it's a part of life but it's being able to deal with it so that you can be happy in it nobody has it put together trust me nobody yeah. has it put together if you don't know us it may seem like we do but you can hear from us right now mm. it's not the case so don't think that we have it put together or so don't put that pressure on you Cool. But something we want from you guys, we're not just going to speak at you, but you can speak to us too. Um, we want you to share some of your stories. It could be anonymously, it can be well known, uh, you know, and whichever one it is. Share some of the stuff that you may be going through or have on your mind. Anything that thoughts that are generated, just let us know. And if there's anything more you want to dive more into this topic, let us know when we're willing to talk about it or even have you down here as well. So email us. Instagram, DM us. Um, I don't know. Stalk, no stalk, stalk, <laughs> yeah. no stalk us. But, oh, unless you know us, you know. But seriously, we want to hear from you as well. The podcast is often like people speak to, you're listening to others speak at you, but we know we're consuming information all the time. So this is your opportunity to kind of be the producer of your own story. <laughs>